Hello and welcome to today's live coaching call and community conversation. Today we are going to be talking about the weekend and intermittent fasting and why it could be you are struggling through the weekend um, instead of thriving through it if you are practicing intermittent fasting. So I'm going to share with you some things that I have done um, in my own life um, that has really helped me re- think the weekend and how it is I show up for myself and how I've been able to really thrive with this intermittent fasting lifestyle, despite the fact that a weekend comes around, you know, every week. So welcome. If you're new, my name is Diane Parham. I am the creator of the online course and community, the intermittent fasting for today's aging woman. And here we get together on Mondays and Thursdays at noon central standard time to talk about all things for us as aging women and how intermittent fasting can really be a tool that we can easily incorporate into our life and change all the things that we are not happy about with our aging process. So uh, what I'm going to do really quickly, if you guys don't mind, because this always excites me at this point in our course. And I know a lot of you are here because you are either a graduate, you're currently in the course or you're looking to join us for the course. And I want to offer you guys some um, encouragement and show how quickly things can change once you get your mindset adapted to this lifestyle. So we are at the end of week one of our intermittent fasting for today's aging woman course for January, 2023. I went through this weekend and snapshotted a couple of comments of the women who were going back and evaluating their first week in class. And Amanda said, she's already starting to sleep like a baby. She feels calm and has steady level of energy, which feels really nice. So congratulations to Amanda, who is currently in our January course. Connie, says, I can't say enough about this course. Still have work ahead of me, but will continue my mindset areas that need fixing. Thank you so much, Diane. Connie, you are super welcome. Uh, we have another member in our course. Um, I kind of just blocked out her name a little bit. Uh, she had to take a double take uh, when she uh, went through uh, the weekend to evaluate her course. She noticed that the puffiness, and I say this all the time, uh, underneath her eyes um, has gone right? And a lot of that puffiness is just some of the things that we're doing in our everyday life. Some of the things that we are just kind of holding on to come out of our skin in a bunch of different ways. We spend hundreds of thousands of dollars in the um, skincare industry trying to get rid of those things. And what if you could just fast? And what if you could just identify some foods that maybe your body wasn't responding to well, eliminate those things, keep your money in your pocket and not have to spend all that money trying to de-puff your eyes when it could just be something that's on the inside trying to find its way out. So super excited for um, our members in class. And then Kathy says, um, if you'd asked her two months ago, if she could fast for 20 hours, she would have said no way, but she is going through the class, taking the lessons, incorporating what I'm teaching and easily jumping into that 24, uh, lifestyle. And then Ange says one, a week down of 20 hours of fasting, four hours of feasting. I've noticed my clothes feeling better and have lost four pounds. Looking forward to learning more about feasting. And that's exactly the week that we are in. So I always say it takes about seven days for you to reverse the signs of aging. And it, the beautiful women inside of our January 2023 course are proving just that. So if you want to start to look and feel your best within seven days, jump into the next class with us, which starts on February the 4th. Okay, so let's get to today's conversation. One of the biggest things that I did for myself was really change the way I manage, schedule, and think about the weekend. And this is why mindset is really a powerful way to think about anything that we are doing in our life. For a lot of people, Sunday night through th Friday or Thursday afternoon, our beat down days, right? We start to stress about our week on Sunday night. And by Thursday, we're so exhausted that we tend to exit our life, jump into the weekend, forget all the things that we structured and, and claimed as being important to us during the week. And we live a completely different way on the weekend. And so when I noticed that I was kind of doing the same thing, what I decided to do is just reevaluate and redefine what weekend meant to me. And for so many of us, especially if we're, you know, we still maybe have some kids at home that we're helping or uh, we're having a job that we're going to, Monday is 
always heavily stacked. That's when we load up our plate, we get back into our workout routine, we maybe detox from the weekend, we uh, jump back into work, we have to get kids back into their routine, and we're exhausting ourselves. And I noticed that I was heavily stacking my own Monday. And so what I decided to do was move my week start day to Thursday. So I changed the definition of what a weekend was for me. And I stopped making the weekend my escape route. And I made my weekend selfish. I really take selfish time on the weekend. And that's when I dive deep into what I say I really want for myself. So Thursday is the start of my week. Now, of course, I have things on Monday that I have to do because that's kind of how the world works, right? Everyone starts back to work and all the things happen on Monday. So I already know that that's going to be a heavily loaded day. So for me personally, I light load it. And I start really diving into my fasting long, feasting well, training smart on a Thursday. That's my day one. Then on Friday, Saturday, Sunday, that's what I've really carved out as my selfish time. Why do I do that? Because Saturday and Sunday and even Friday are the days that I can not be super responsible for other people because it is the weekend and I can be really selfish with time that I designate for myself. I can get better sleep. I can get some really long structured workouts in. I can, in fact, fast really long. And I really made that connection when I did this. I just redefined what my weekend is. And when I stopped escaping my life on the weekend and really dove into the life I was creating for myself, the weekend is where I started to really thrive with even my fasting. I can get some longer fasts in because I got to take advantage and control of my own time. So Friday, Saturday, Sunday is where I'm selfish. That's my me time. Monday, I build in a very light schedule for myself. So this morning I woke up, casually kind of got my day started, did just a really light 30 minute walk on my treadmill so that I can just get some movement in, got myself ready to come here and be with y'all. I have some calls scheduled later today. And then my night is very light as well. So I really treat Monday, like it's a weekend day, despite the fact that I have some work um, commitments kind of built in there. So Monday is super light. I don't use Monday as I'm going to get back into my routine. I take Monday as a, wow, I had a fantastic weekend. Let me do a little bit of downplaying the things that I have on my calendar so that I can just regroup and prepare myself for Thursday, right? Tuesday is my rest day. So I usually don't schedule any big things on Tuesday. I do some work in the office, but I don't have a heavy workout day because that's again the day that I rest and recoup as if it was a weekend day. And then I have other obligations. So I just cleared out my schedule and gave myself permission to rest from my workouts and do some other things that I usually do without punishing myself. And that's a big thing. We talk about this a lot in the Midlife Mindset Shift course. We talk about giving ourselves permission to pause on something without punishing ourselves. So I don't work out on Tuesdays if I don't feel like it, and that's totally fine. And then Wednesday is a flex day. I really leave Wednesday open to be the day to prepare, sort of like a lot of people do on Sundays, for my start of the week, which is Thursday. So Wednesday, I really do a lot of my preparations to leading up to the weekend so that I can have a lot of freedom here to be selfish with my own time. So I get a lot of things done on my checklist on Wednesday so that I can start my week on Thursday. This shift on how I design my own week has changed everything for me as far as fasting, as far as how I go into my mindset with the weekend where I don't feel beat down and like I have to escape a bunch of things and 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 literally like change the skin I'm in to adapt to weekend mode. My weekend mode is exactly where I thrive and I show up as my best self most authentically and very selfishly because I have the time and energy to do that on the weekend because of the way I'm structuring this part of my week and then mentally just starting things on Thursday. So if you're feeling like you're struggling with the weekend because maybe peer pressure or social obligations, I want you to think about what kind of mental and emotional energy you go into the weekend with, right? If you're feeling beat down, if you're feeling like you're trying to escape your week, if you're feeling so exhausted that you can't imagine like doing the things that you say that you really want for yourself, 
What are Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday looking like for you? And can you do some things to change these days so that when Saturday morning rolls around, you've had an excellent night's sleep, you can lean long into that fasting schedule, um, you can get some extra workouts or movement in, and you don't feel like you're beating yourself up. Um, the other thing about this kind of mindset about the weekend with fasting that really helps is when you're doing this, when you're really selfish on the weekend and you're getting some really good structured workouts in, you get a nice long fasting schedule in, maybe you have more time to really structure in the water that you're drinking and all of those things, even having a social life at night you're going to go into that with a completely different mindset as well because Sunday morning, if you scheduled some workouts, that's going to determine what you do on Saturday night, right? So this is where I've made that distinction between how I show up for myself and my workouts as well. And on the weekends, I show up like a conditioned athlete. And I always ask myself, what does a conditioned athlete do on Friday, Saturday, Sunday night if they have to show up and perform, right? And so you will make sure that you're showing up so that your selfish time is also your best time. And those fasting, um, maybe challenges that you're having on the weekend will just smooth themselves out because you are going to be putting you first because you've decided that that's where you're going to be your most selfish. It seems like a super simple thing to do. Um, but once you like, it's almost like we overlook it, but once you really put this on paper and schedule this out, it will be a game changer for you. And you will look forward to the weekends and fasting as opposed to kind of dreading it, feeling like you're going to undo everything you did during the week. There's no need to undo anything. We just casually move ourselves through life, right? And we consistently over time make those informed decisions. So we can, in fact, wake up looking and feeling our best and living our most authentic life. And that's what we want here for everyone in the community. So hopefully this will kind of help you rethink some things. See what your energy is like on Thursday. See what your energy and thoughts are over the weekend. See how your Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday is rolling out and see if maybe just some shifts in your mindset can change the game for you. Okay, so let's see who we have here today with us. I'm here to answer any questions or comments you have. If you're in our January class um, and you want to share a little bit about what's going on with your uh, first week in class, I'd love to hear from you as well. And of course, we always love to hear from our graduates also. Okay, so let's see who we got here. Jean was the first one here today. Happy Monday, my friend. I just made it through the hardest time of the year. Halloween through New Year's and didn't gain a pound. IF Joss Works, 24 Joss Works. Love this community and this lifestyle. Thanks, Diane. Yeah, you're welcome. We now have women who are going on vacation and not gaining weight, getting through the holidays and not gaining weight, getting through stressful times and not gaining weight, right? And it's all we have to do is rethink about how we put food in our life when life is happening. And the, the reality is life is always going to be happening. So uh, Jean, I'm super happy for you. And I'm happy now that you can redefine that season of your life. And maybe it's where you thrive instead of it being the hardest uh, time of your life. Uh, Creekinator. Yes. Super encouraging. Uh, Jean is doing all the work. Super happy for her. Uh, good morning, January 23 students. Well, girlfriend, I hope you are thriving in class and you had a great first week as well. You guys in the January 2023 class are doing everything exactly the way it's supposed to happen beginning of or the first weekend, everybody's kind of like deer in the headlights and you're nervous and all the anticipation about, you know, what to expect um, is all in the air and it, it, you can feel it. And then by like Tuesday, Wednesday, things start to settle down. Thursday, Friday, you all start, it all starts kicking in. Things start connecting for you. You start seeing and feeling the results change. And then by the weekend, it's like you're all pros and you guys are all doing that work and it's showing because you're all showing up like pros and I'm so happy for you. Uh, Wanna hello, Elilu. Good morning, everyone. Yes, weekends are hard. Okay, so here's what I want us to think about. What if we said week on, weekends are where we thrive? Like weekends are where we fast the best. Weekends are whatever you want them to be, right? And if you if you maybe structure your schedule so that you can, in fact, thrive on the weekends, then weekends can be the area where you really get to lean in hard and really get the best results. And when you do that, when you're not undoing the weekend on a Monday, everything starts to really click and change for you. It's really powerful. Susan, good afternoon, August 22 grad, made it through the holidays unscathed. That's how we do it here, my friend. Holidays are supposed to be a time of joy, right? And a time of connecting with our people and, 
and really, you know, taking the time to be grateful for all the things we have and, and sharing the blessings that we have and all of those good things and really removing that stress and anxiety from the holidays really does help us live our best life. And I'm super happy that you found that this year. Deb from Virginia. Hello, Dawn weekend recovery, LOL. Okay. Yeah. We don't need to recover on the weekends, from the weekends, right? What I want us to do is just do this seven days a week, 365. Holidays, we're like this. Vacation, we're like this. Weekends, we're like this. Celebrations, we're like this. We just head it off, right? Um, and go into it with that mindset of like, we know we want, this is how we want to come out of this situation. And you think about that before you get into it. And then in fact, you'll come out exactly the way you want. So, um, uh, work on that one, my friend, and there'll be no more weekend recovery. Uh, Tamara from Montecito, how's California, my friend? Hopefully the rain has stopped over there. Don, current 23 class participant, girlfriend, so excited for you. We're in week two, the feasting week, and hopefully those connections will start clicking for you, you as well. It's really powerful when we get that feasting aspect down because then it's just it's just game on for sure. Uh, Tamara, IF is a gift. Open it and your life will change. I 100% agree with that statement. Thanks for sharing your thoughts. Vija, happy Monday to you. And I must say you are doing a wonderful job. God bless. Thank you, my friend, Tracy. Happy New Year. Uh, Grace Hill from Crystal Palace, still doing 24 and loving it. Thank you, Diane. November 22 grad, best thing ever. My skin feels amazing. Yes, it's all of those little things that we tend to take for granted uh, or we don't make the connection with intermittent fasting because intermittent fasting has kind of been, you know, um, put in the diet world. And yes, we talk about weight loss here because that is exciting, especially for women in menopause. But it's those subtle little changes that I think are so powerful, the skin improvement, the sleep improvement, the mood improvement, getting rid of the puffiness under our eyes so we don't have to spend hundreds of dollars on deep puff cream because our body just knows that it doesn't want to hold on to that when we're thriving in a fasting lifestyle, right? So all of those things are super, super fun to start noticing and make sure if you are fasting, look for things beyond weight loss. Look for how are my nails feeling? How are they growing? How is my hair? How is my skin? Are my eyelashes growing back? Like all of those things matter. And if you don't look for them, then you will you will second guess why they're happening. And it's always just because you've just created a healthy lifestyle for yourself. Grace, um, I think I did that one already. Uh, Amy, howdy everyone. November 22 grad. My mindset goes out the window over the weekend. Loving the teaching today. Amy, Create this plan. Get yourself a planner. Like I seriously schedule in my workouts where I put those rest days in there on a Tuesday. Man, there is no better feeling than having a rest day from working out or maybe just a bunch of to-dos that you have on a Tuesday. Woo, it is the best. So then by the time Thursday rolls around, I'm ready to rock and roll. Friday, I'm good to go. I make sure that the decisions that I make on Friday night are going to support what it is I have on my schedule for Saturday morning and Sunday morning. And then Monday rolls around and you are ready to hit the road because you just didn't, you didn't spend two days beating yourself up, right? And so Mondays actually become fun and they're not dreaded because you know you've built in some time to just lay low, right? And ease back into your week. Super, super uh, fun way to shift how it is we think about the week. Susie, hello from England. Good to have you. And we got a London, UK. Grace, love it. Weight dropping off. Mm -hmm. Love that too, right? When weight comes off of our body, and we're not hyper-focused on it, and we're not depriving ourselves of things, when the weight comes off, it is like, it's like literally unbelievable. And that's exactly what happened to me. I share all the time how it took me about a year to really figure out fasting, mostly because I was listening to all the nonsense on the internet, right? And all of the um, advice given by people who have no business giving menopausal women advice. I did all the things. So it took me a year and I was super frustrated. I think I more did more damage than good in the beginning because I was doing all the things that I shouldn't be doing. Um, and then when it clicked for me, this 20 hour fasting and this four hour feasting and the clean fasting and everything that I teach you guys in class, so it was like literally a light bulb went off or a, I call it like the flip of a switch and 
everything changed for me and the weight just literally melted off my body and it was super fun and it was super easy because I didn't have to do a whole lot. I let my body do all the work and that's really what I hope for you guys as well. Um, Gavel, I think it is from North Carolina. I've been watching while vacationing in Maui. Well, now I'm a little envious. I love me some Maui. I hope the weather there is great. I hope you're enjoying yourself. Uh, Maui is the best. Vanessa, happy November 22 grad. It's all about the mindset. It is 100% all about the mindset. Uh, and that's, I think, what's unique about what we do here in this community, and you guys are a big part of that, is we actually start to think. And a lot of times when we get you know, pulled into plans and challenges and what other people are doing, we don't think, and we're not even expected to think. And that's one of the things I really encourage, especially as a coach for women, is you have to think for yourself. You have to be empowered to make those decisions, informed about the decisions you're making, and then just be really clear about what it is you say you want, and then everything gets really easy. Marie, my first week went great. I still can't believe I fasted for 20 hours. I know. I'm not sleeping well. Not sure if it's the fasting or menopause. I feel great though. The sleeping part will balance itself out. So, and then we have to also, Marie, and you could put this in our community group if you want, describe to me what not sleeping well is. Because in the very beginning, a lot of times what happens is you have all this internal energy that's being created from your body in that um uh, long of a fasted state, especially when it's clean. And so it's not so much that you're not sleeping great. It's that you're not sleeping the way maybe you used to when you felt exhausted all the time. And so we have to make sure we're defining that clearly in our head. And it could just be, you have all that internal energy. It will balance out and then you will start to sleep like a baby, which, you know, how babies sleep is kind of interesting that we use that reference, but you'll sleep well. And this is what's so great. If you do any kind of sleep tracking, you'll see those REM numbers go up. You'll see those deep numbers go up and you will wake up in the morning feeling rested and ready to go. But it does take a little bit of a transition to get there, depending on where you started from with your own body and all the hormonal things you have going on with you. Susan, great coaching as always. Spent the weekend going through your recent videos and taking detailed notes. Oh, I love it. Thanks so much for hanging out. Uh, Robin, hello from Colorado, January 23, uh, course member. I almost called you a grad. That was a little premature. Feeling good. I'll call you a grad in a couple of weeks, my friend. Uh, Ro, my name is Ro. I'm in the January class and loving every bit of it. I'm doing great with this program and thriving. I feel so good. When the weekend comes, I'm more excited because um, it gets easier to stick to. Yeah, that's what I think too. Um, and I did kind of go in with that mindset in the very beginning of the weekend was going to be hard until I did this work. And I'm like, why am I setting myself up for failure when I get to define how the weekend plays out? And I stopped listening to like what society's expectation of the weekend was. And when I did this change and how I set up my week, game changer, super fun. Uh, week one, lots of wins, lots of learning. You you twist my thinking in such helpful ways. Thank you. So much seems obvious and yet it isn't. Thank you for all you do. Um, Radeski, I hope that the connection that you're making is I'm just asking you to think, right? And just reconsider some of the thought processes that we just have so ingrained in our brain that really aren't working for us and we haven't asked why. Um, and I have spent the last six years just asking why on repeat. Um, and all the answers that I'm getting from my own asking of the why, I just present to you guys for you to have the same experience. Just ask why. Like, why am I doing this thing? And oftentimes there's no reason for it. We just do things on autopilot. So what you're doing, and I hope you're you're noticing this and making some firm, like in concrete decisions about it, is you're just changing what your autopilot is. And that's really powerful. Dale, January 23 student with an abundance of energy. This girl is getting stuff done and loving it. Yes, that's that internal energy. And so for some of you who are finding that you're not sleeping well, what I recommend doing is laying off any kind of coffee for about a week uh, because when you have internal energy and then you have external energy, um, you could be just in an energy overload, which is mind blowing for women in menopause. I think you have so much energy, your body doesn't know where to store it and what to do with it, right? But that's what happens. And so see if that might be something that you can kind of play with a little bit. What I noticed when I started 
kicking in with that energized sense of calm was I would find like a full coffee cup at the end of the day. Like I poured it out of habit, but never drank it because I, I didn't have the need for it or even the desire, desire for it. So just check those kind of things and make sure you're not getting too energized in both directions, internally and externally. Vidya, uh, weekends are very nice for me. Thanks. Awesome. I love that. Natalie, how do I introduce my friend to you to get her started? Is there a certain video? I would just say have her subscribe to the YouTube channel um, or she can just get on my email list would be another way for sure if she's interested. The thing that we have to remember about our friends and family is that they are going to watch you to see how well you do. So just, I would say, be a really good example of what you're loving and and what it is that's so great that you want her to be interested in. And then she'll get curious for sure. But if she's actively interested, you can have her go to fortodaysagingwoman.com, get on my email list, um, or just have her look me up on YouTube and subscribe to the YouTube channel. And then she can kind of find her way um, when it's convenient for her. And thanks for sharing. I appreciate you. Judy, hello. So nice to be here live, November 22 grads. So good to have you. Shirley, I will be on vacation when you start your next class. I could start on the 6th. Can I make this work? Yes. So the class starts on the 4th, which is a Saturday. And the Saturday is just a, hey, welcome to class. Can you log in? Do you remember your password? Here's, um, I do a FAQ inside of class. So it's just I guess I call it a soft start. Sunday, we do our first group fast. So that will be the fifth. And then Monday, you can just jump in. So um, you won't be missing a whole lot at all. And it's all pre recorded. So you can catch yourself up pretty quickly. So Saturday is soft. Uh, Sunday, we kind of structure our first 20 hour fast together. You can just do that. Um, and then if you have internet connection while you're on vacation, not a problem. You can just check in. Super fun. Um, you don't have to change your life. I teach you how to incorporate this into your life. So you can even do this while you're on vacation and we would love to have you. Jeanette, late but here, current class and will we rot? We'll rewatch. Awesome. Uh, Judy B. Hello. So nice to be here. Live 22 grad. Love it. Um, PS red is a good color for you. Thank you so much. Um, I am personally not a red fan. I always feel like it makes my skin look green, but I appreciate the compliment. I will take it. Uh, Christy, July 22 grass, just saying hi and loving the 24 forever. Girlfriend, I'm so happy for you. And thanks for stopping by to say hi. I appreciate you. Andrea, do we not need to mix up fasting time? So much conflicting info out there. Thanks for all you do. Here's what I say about that. That's someone else's thing, right? That they, they, they feel like, you know, Tuesdays you're supposed to fast for 20, Wednesday 16, do only 500 calories here, da, 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 da. That's a diet because it's so hard and structured. What I like to teach is tell your brain you always fast for 20 hours. Like my brain just believes I fast for 20 hours all the time. That's just who I am. That's my life. That's how I show up. No conflict, no confusion. Then I allow for life to happen. So if I go on vacation, there might be a day I fast for 16. I just give myself permission to pause on the 20 without punishing myself. There's going to be a time when someone invites you out to lunch. You get to decide. Do you want to go to lunch? Or do you want to continue to fast? If you decide to go to lunch, go to lunch. And then you get back on your fasting schedule, uh, you know, the next day or you don't, you skip dinner that night or whatever. So it's all just the information that we tell our own brain. I tell my brain every day is a 20 hour fasting day. And then I just don't have a whole lot of things I have to do. The other part about the, like some days you should fast for 16, some days you shouldn't fast at all. Like all that kind of nonsense is y'all we're busy. We're busy people. The last thing I need to do is wonder what day of the week I'm supposed to do something else because someone else told me that that's what I was supposed to do. I don't have time for that nonsense. Um, and so I just fast every day for 20 hours and then I let life happen. You don't need to fluctuate anything. Um, and then the other thing about that, Andrea, that I will say is that that would be under the assumption that your body is always taking in processing, breaking down, utilizing, storing everything exactly the same way. So you have to create a shift. Your body's different every single day. Your body's different every single hour. So your body's going to factor in the differential. You don't have to create that. That's just more work. So just trust your body. Fast for 20, feast for four. 
let your life happen around you. Kim, October 22 grad started IF last July and have lost 44 pounds. My body has taken a pause on weight loss, but continuing 24. I love this lifestyle. Yeah, our body is not designed to lose weight every single day whenever we think we're supposed to be losing weight and the consistency over time will allow your body to get back into weight loss if your body is in fact in a place where it can lose weight. So we have to remember that as well. Patty, hello, my friend. Haven't seen you in forever. Jeanette, I'm losing weight and I'm looking forward to renewed hair and nails and skin. That is coming. That is coming. And then just make sure you catch yourself when you're not all like freaked out by all the flyaways. I have flyaways all the time. I say, I, I love flyaways in my hair. I love these little baby hairs growing back. That's a good sign. Things are good, right? Because we're constantly losing hair. And then when your hair grows back, be grateful for those little baby hairs pick, uh, poking out. Uh, this is Anne. One more thing. I love the tools for feasting. Oh, thank you for saying that. I appreciate that so much. Um, I get a lot of feedback on the fasting part, but not a whole lot on the feasting part. And that's because I don't tell you what to do. So I think people don't, you know, they don't know what to say, but I appreciate the fact that you're, you're probably referring to the feasting guide that I give you. Love that thing. Super simple, makes uh, making food decisions super easy. Amanda, I have been sleeping beautifully and have a really nice constant and yet very, and yet very calm energy. That's the energized sense of calm. You just described it beautifully. Uh, we need to copyright or trademark that phrase because it is very specific here to this community. The energized sense of calm is a beautiful um, and very like kind of Zen place to live your life when you have so much energy to get the things done that you need to get done. But emotionally and mentally, you're like this. It is the best the best for sure. No more sugar highs and lows. Amanda, my sleep balanced itself out. The first few days were really bad, but then it leveled out and now I sleep like a baby. Yeah, 100%. That's what you have to do. Just give yourself the time and grace. And it is different for every woman. So Amanda, first couple of days were bad and then it leveled out. Some people it's a week or two. It all just kind of depends. But what I can tell you is if you consistently stick with this and trust this process, everything balances itself, itself out. Everything does. It just takes a little time. Judy, I have 24 is the way to go. I have lost more than 40 pounds since October. Sleep better, inflammation gone. Thank you, Diane, for all you do. I am almost to my normal weight about 20 years ago. Y'all, menopausal women can lose weight. You can be happy with your life. You can be happy with your body. You can have all the things. I'm so happy for you, Judy. Keep up that good work. Yes, sleep gets to be so good. Yes, 100%. Lori, my ex and father of three boys passed away three days before Christmas and everything was out the window. Ate and drank a lot, but that's okay. Not worried about it all and ready to jump back in again. Okay, Lori, super sorry to hear that you had to go through that. Uh, I can't even imagine. What I want you to think about is where do you want to be, right? Next week, next month, next year. And we can manage all the grief and the pain and all that stuff without doing damage to ourselves. So I know it's hard. I, I know it can be gut-wrenching as well, but I want you to think about how you need to show up tomorrow, how you need to show up next week, how you need to show up next month, how you need to show up next year. Start making decisions on that direction and not this direction, and things will start to feel lighter for you, and you feel like you're back in control of the decisions that you're making for yourself, and it sounds like you've already made that decision. Another thing I say all the time as a coach is once you make the decision that things need to change, that instance is when the decision to make things change happens. You don't have to wait till tonight. You don't have to wait till tomorrow morning. You don't have to wait till Monday. You don't have to wait till the first. You don't have to wait for an invitation. Right now is when you start to make those changes in your thoughts and your mindset because you deserve that. Sending you big hugs, Lori. Hope, hopefully things will get better. Uh, Dale, my friend Sandy Roz, uh, Roser said, check her you out. Never looking back. Yes, we love us some Sandy. Sandy's um, one of our star students. She's in our midlife mindset shift course. Sandy is an amazing person. You are super lucky to have her in her life. I feel very lucky to have her in my life as well. And glad you took her advice and you're here with us. Vanessa, I feel like I'm on this incredibly huge secret, loving my new IF life. Um, it is kind of, well, the way we do it is a secret, right? Um, not that we're holding it from anybody, but it's a secret because people don't trust that it could be this easy. Um, and so that's what I love is that um, it can be this easy, right? 
Um, and you just get to decide to make it this easy. And it really does kind of start with us. Jan, August 22 grad. Thank you for being the life coach. I never knew I needed. I'm super grateful to you, Diane, for changing my life. Well, Jan, I appreciate you saying that. And here's what I always say to these kind of comments, Jan, and I'm glad that you um, shared this with us today, is I will show up for you guys every day. I will be here for you. But Jan, give yourself a pat on the back today because you decided to listen and implement. I can't make anyone implement, right? I can talk and I talk all day. I talk all the time. I tend to ramble on. I love what I get to do, but you decided that you wanted to make the change and you made the implementation and now you're showing up for you. So I appreciate the compliment. I always own them, but I want to make sure that you compliment yourself back for doing all the work to make sure you get to thrive in this environment. Diane, hello from Pennsylvania. Loving the 2023 course. Diane Kramer, I think it is Kramer, Kramer. Make sure you let me know how I, if I said that correctly. Um, was in our class twice. She was in, I think, in 2017 or 18, and she's in the January 23 class um, as a refresher. So I always love when you guys come back into a newly formatted course, and that's what the 2023 class is. Diane, Donna, I have listened to other coaches or teachers on IF. I just love your presentation. You make more sense, and it made it simple in class this month. Yes. I don't, life's hard as it is, right? Taking the care of ourselves shouldn't be any harder than it already is. And so I really try to make it as simple as possible. And I, and I think part of the simplicity of it is you getting the power back for you. So Donna, take control of you, feel empowered, make powerful decisions, sit in that state of empty and sit in that state of hungry and know that's where you are thriving and have the opportunity to live your best life. And then just rinse and repeat all of that for sure. Patty, uh, IF is so easy and not complicated. When I do, why do I even think I need to do more? I feel wonderful when I IF. You have taught me so much, Diane. I need to remember all of you have taught me and the mindset. I will have my journal on Wednesday and I started out with 16 hour fast today. My goal is 20 hours. I miss sleeping wonderful and I miss not having my sense of calm. It feels so wonderful to be back. Yeah. Glad to have you back, my friend. And no, just go back and review some of your Patty, for you, you're such a pro. Just go back and do the first week of lessons from the intermittent fasting course and everything will just click and you'll be, you'll have that determination and focus to just go right back to that 20. Patricia, Weight Watcher, Keto, Eating and Fasting 24, Losing. Awesome. Uh, Rebecca, just tuning in from Germany. Hello, my friend from Germany. Uh, super happy to have you here. I love the internet and the fact that we can reach women from all over the world. Rebecca, thankful to sleep well as a general rule. Pretty much always have. Yeah, love it. I love that for you, that you've always been able to sleep well and that's continuing on. Um, okay, so you all know our next intermittent fasting for today's Aging Woman course. Uh, we start one every month the first Saturday of every month. So if you want to plan ahead, you can kind of count on that. Uh, February the 4th is when our next class starts. We uh, close registration the night before because we have our community group. We welcome everyone. If you're on the fence, you're not sure if this is for you, always feel free to reach out for me. Reach out to me. I can answer any questions you have. You've seen here from our graduates um, from doesn't matter what year it is, 2017, 2022, they're still thriving and doing well and making the decision that if they stepped away. They can just come right back in. We'll always be here to support you in that. Um, but we would love to have you in our course with us and then as a graduate of our community. And once you sign up, you get the downloads for the fasting uh, part of it and the feasting part of it. And then you've already made that switch or that mindset decision in your brain that you are committed to creating a lifestyle where you can, in fact, look and feel your best and do that in your most authentic way, even as a menopausal woman. And I love that. It's a typo in the link. Oh, I thought I fixed that. Okay, thank you. I'm going to fix that right now. Um, I, I think I had it last time and I didn't. I thought I changed it on the thing. Okay, there you go. Did I get it right? Uh, I think that one's right. Let me know if that one's, if that one's right. Uh, Kim, can you see if that one worked for you? Um, I have a hard time talking and typing at the same time. So sometimes I do a little typos in there, but I'll fix it. So I think we got it fixed on that one. Uh, Natalie, thank you so much, girlfriend. You're awesome too. Okay, I've got to run because I get to go do this all again in my midlife mindset shift course. Kim, awesome. Thank you for checking that. And I'll go back and delete the bad links in the uh, comment section for Facebook. Um, 
as well. So no one else clicks on that. Uh, I get to go do this in the midlife mindset shift course. So as a graduate, if you want to continue this mindset shift work with me, go a little deeper and a little more personal. I do offer a six month and one year program for mindset shift work for us. Um, and if once you're a graduate, you'll get invited to join that. Or if you're on my email list as a graduate, you get invited to join that as well. So always working on our mindset because life is challenging, right? And we always want to make sure that we are making uh, the best decisions for us as we move into our future self. Love you guys. Have a great Monday. I'll see you guys back here on a Thursday at noon central standard time, where of course we'll talk about something else for us as aging women and intermittent fasting.